part of Clearwell Caves in the Forest of Dean and with me is the owner, Ray Wright. Um, Ray, how long have these caves actually been here in a mining form? Um, over 4,000 years. They were mining the coloured iron oxides here um, during the Bronze Age. And when was it actually utilised by foresters, so say, for modern mining techniques? Well, it's been used um, during that period of 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. The families would have been living in the forest, and those families, the families that are here now, are most probably descendants of those people. So they passed their mining traditions on down yeah. through the, mm -hmm. to the yeah. families. And yeah, although a lot of the miners have never been to college, they've got a, a very good knowledge of the geology and how the ground works and they were very sort of superstitious people superstitious as the way we see things they believed that everything had a spirit the trees the rocks the mine so how far do the caves extend underground there's 600 acres of mine complex here a great many miles of passageways and thousands of caverns. And how deep do they actually go underground? They went, they mined down just over 600 feet. I, I've been down here when I've heard voices. Right. And they've been a little way off. And when you go up towards them, there's nobody there. Oh, right. Were they solid or you didn't actually see anything? It's just didn't what you see heard, anything, was no. Yeah. Oh, right. But you sometimes see. Uh, little orbs of light yeah. Is that what flowing through and a lot of people who've come to the caves with cameras have taken pictures of moisture in the air like very fine clouds yeah. and they take on different shapes just as clouds do yeah. and some of them even look like people yeah. but when I say I've never seen an apparition mm. I did see an apparition quite oh, recently <laughs> Really? Yeah. And the apparition looked very much like um, this big guy off Harry Potter. What's his name? Oh, yeah. Hagrid. Um, Hagrid, Hagrid yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I was walking through that passageway back up there. And um, as I was approaching it, he was walking away from me. I just saw the back of him mm -hmm. with his long hair. And, oh, right. Mm -hmm. and, but you couldn't see him? Didn't but, well, him. when I looked up and realised that there was somebody there, it, it disappeared. Wow. With all the work that's been going on down here, has there been any recorded tragedies or accidents or anything like that down here? We've, some time ago we found a, a boot that where a, a miner had had his foot crushed and the, it was still wedged between two big rocks and they'd cut the top out of the boot so that he'd get, get his foot out. Oh, yeah. So I imagine all over the years there would have been some... And there was another chap... Um, there's a tombstone in a local churchyard to a young lad of 18 years of age who was killed by a stone fall on him weighing five tons. And then another man from the Bream area somewhere had a similar lump of rock fall on him, but this time it just cut his leg off. And when um, he came out of hospital a few weeks later, he discovered his mates had got his leg out from underneath the piece of rock. <laughs> And they made a little coffin for it, <laughs> so that he could attend the funeral to his own leg. <laughs> so they had a very good sense of humour. <laughs> the other thing I was going to ask, Colin has actually said that um, he's experienced, and he's got friends who've experienced, um, people who've actually been lost in the, you know, the mine shaft, the tunnels <clears throat> and stuff, have been guided back out yeah. by somebody, mm. a spirit or a spirit mm. guide. Mm. Have you heard that theory yourself? Um, it's very rarely that I've got lost down here, but I have on a few occasions. Yeah. Um, and it's bats mainly that I follow. They know the way out. They know the way out. There is a story though that um, I think something's been filmed down here years ago. And uh, that's, that's right. was a, a, a gentleman of. appeared and showed the, the, the film crew where, exactly where to put the cables to get down to the lowest, lower cables. Yeah, we'd shown them where to put the cables. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, We'd gone back up top, it was a nice sunny day, like very much like today. And we were sat up there having a cup of tea, when the technicians came back up and said, 
Hey, your mate down there, he just showed us another route to the, put the cables, a much shorter route mm -hmm. than one you showed us. He said, where is he? We want to thank him. He saved us a lot of work. <laughs> and, uh, of he said, there's only two of us here today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story. One of the chaps was Irish, and he wouldn't come back down here again. No, fair, yeah. <laughs> but the, the old miners always used to say, every mine has a language all of its own, mm -hmm. and you must learn that language and listen and be very observant. Mm. Otherwise, the old man will have you. Mm. The old man being the rock, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel that? You feel that personally, yeah. right, when mm. you're here? Mm. You actually, mm. So you basically feel like one with the earth? Yeah. Yeah, that's really mm. good. You can't stop learning about everything around you once you're in these mines, because mm. that's the only way you survive. Yeah. Mm.